Where, where did we start? <laughs> ecstasy, yeah. It gives me ecstasy when the image and the story and the lighting and the music align so well that something happens. The, 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 the cinema, the art, breaks through the screen. It literally breaks through the screen and becomes real in me, in the audience, in the viewer. And it's this idea that it's all real. You know, William Gibson says we'll look back on the past and laugh at the so-called distinction between the real and virtual worlds, you know, or as an interview about Inception said, you know, a catharsis found in a dream, just like the catharsis found in a film, just like the catharsis found in life, they're all real. The catharsis found in a psychedelic trip or the catharsis found in the dream you had last night. The point is, if you experience catharsis, you experience catharsis. That's ecstasy, that's the transcendent effect. And so again, um, knowing this, then the goal of every artist is not just to communicate his ecstatic vision, but also to reverse engineer it, because we're all seeking ways to figure out how to elicit ecstasy, rapturous awe, a la carte, on demand, like Time Warner on demand, you know? And so it's this idea that people say inspiration is a haphazard phenomenon, ecstasy, you can't manufacture bliss. And I say, you absolutely can. It's David Pierce's hedonistic imperative. Use technology, use biotechnology, use electronic technology, use chemical technology, spray your eyeballs with computers, tweak your brains with, you know, with chemicals. Do whatever you got to do to set the precursors in motion that will lead to the emergent phenomenon of ecstasy. Set the mood, adjust the lighting, put the song on, drink the glass of wine, invite the right people, curate spaces that create ecstasy, that spill over, the transcendent.